Bum, 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 I'm back. Hello everyone. Welcome back to the channel. It's Adam Ratliff with Adam So Fun and I am back after a six month hiatus because why? I don't know. I just took some time for myself. I actually worked a lot. I've been traveling and um, last year I wore myself out. So this year I said you can't wear yourself out. Make your videos when you can and I just got off a six week uh, stint and I'm home for a few weeks and I'm loving it. I'm Piecing. That's why my, ha my house, my room is a mess because I'm piecing things, making this video, getting ready to quilt out the second part of this video. So I don't know. I'm very excited to be here. I missed you all. But today I am so excited because um, for those of you who don't know, Pro Stitcher has done this huge uh, transfer and new Pro Stitcher Connect in the last few weeks. And um, there's just a lot going on with Pro Stitcher. And here's one more. Helen Godden, the amazing, the... Um, Amazingly talented, true artist Helen Godden from Australia is releasing a line of exclusive designs um, through Pro Stitcher Patterns. So ProStitcher.com, go look at patterns there. You can download her designs on any format for any long arm. So um, if you don't have a handy quilter, you can use them for anything. But I'm so excited about this because I got to spend some time with Helen last year at, uh, at um, Houston at Quilt Festival and Quilt Market. Oh my gosh, not only is she so talented, but she's also one of the nicest people I've ever spent time with. It was just, it was so great to get to know her on the other side of like, uh, not just standing at the, you know, playing on the long arms, but like as a real person. So um, she's a real person. We're all real people. Uh, but I also fangirl out just like all of you. So um, so I did get to spend some time with her. So much fun. Lots of, lo oh gosh, tons of laughing. I don't think the laughing stopped, but um, but. Uh, I'm, I've always been in awe of her work because like when I see the things she does, I'm like, eh, I can never do that. Like I can't color in the lines because she's, if you don't know or are not familiar with her, um, I've been watching her for years. Like she's one of the originals and I always tell this story because I was watching her on a Facebook live one day or one of her videos and she was doing a sashing design. She's like, let's make kangaroos. I can't do an Australian accent or I do it. And she starts stitching. I'm like, that doesn't look like a kangaroo. But she did the whole top and it came in and made the feet. So it was like stitch to the right, come back to the left. Oh my gosh, it was little kangaroos. I And I was, I think I was hooked. I was hooked. I was a Helen Godden stan from then on because she was just effortless. It was effortless with what she was doing. So um, I've always really loved her style. But again, it's something that I don't think I could do. I don't have the artistic talent there, um, but I do have pro stitcher. So when I was told that these designs were gonna release and stuff, um, I was chatting with my friends over at Quiltable who are now Pro Stitcher Patterns and um, they were letting me know and I said, can you send them to me? I wanna see if I can do some stuff because I feel like I could probably use them, maybe not the way that other people might because Helen will stitch everything out, she'll paint it and then she'll stitch over and stitch more details in that paint and um, can I paint it? No. Could I stitch details over something someone painted? Yes, but I'm not going to do the painting part. I can't stitch in the lines. I can't color in the lines. I don't do anything in the lines. Hello, I'll, I always talk about getting outside the box. So, um, so they sent me some designs. I was looking at them. I'm like, what can I do? What can I do? And I thought, you know, there's options or there's fun functions in Pro Stitcher Designer. I could maybe color block this. So on my flight, when we uh, took some time away and went to Hawaii, um, on the flight, I started playing with this and I started color blocking some of the designs to make them almost look embroidered. And um, I posted some teaser pictures without Helen's like actual design behind it. And today I'm gonna teach you how to do that. Um, there's, so if you go onto Pro Stitcher Patterns, ProStitcher.com, um, she has, there's four new sets from Helen. Um, these are not available for membership downloads. These are designs Helen is selling through Quiltable exclusively through Quilt, or sorry, it, this, I'm going to say Quiltable a lot, um, through Pro Stitcher patterns. For those of you who buy things on Pro Stitcher, ASF 10 will save you an additional 10% off. And that's ASF, like Adam So Fun 10. Um, so yeah, always use that because then you're always saving money. But you know me, I want to save you money. But um, a few things about, uh, or she has new four new four new sets. Um, she has two fill sets, and then she has two um, bird sets. I just went over to my computer and I looked, and then I started the video, and I already forgot because I'm getting so excited about Helen's designs. But um, I'm using the bird set volume one, but there are two volumes. I don't have volume two, so I'm gonna have to send an email. Um, I was actually chatting uh, with them the other day. I'm like, I don't have this design. 
and it's the design on the name card that shows Helen with the uh, with the parakeet or the whatever parrot. I don't know what I don't know birds, and I butcher the names. But um, I didn't have that one because it was in volume two, and I have volume one. But um, oh my gosh, I just keep talking. I'm can you tell I'm excited to be back, man. Um, but so what we're gonna do is I brought those designs into Pro Stitcher Designer because we can. Why not? And what, I, what we're gonna do is we're gonna create areas around specific parts of the birds. We're gonna go into those areas and we're gonna assign a fill to it. Um, I don't even know if you knew you could do that. So um, there's a lot of different options when we talk about fills. We're gonna, it, um, we're gonna add a wave fill. We're gonna change the direction of the waves and customize it to our liking. And um, we're gonna color code it. And so this first video is gonna show you how to do all those steps. In the second video, I'm gonna show you how to stitch it out. There's a few things we have to do in Designer before we go stitch it out. So um, the next video will be out next week. So you can go into Designer this week. You can play, you can get those designs, set up all your birds if you want. I don't, I don't know. I've done three of the first five and now I found out there's four more. So um, it'll be something that I have to like, when do I teach again? I'll probably do them on the plane whenever I'm flying to the Kansas City Regional Quilt Show in two weeks. But, um, so if you're gonna be in Kansas City, uh, June 14th-ish, I think that's when I fly in, uh, come by and see me, I'll be in the Handy Quilter booth. Uh, this is 2023, by the way. Um, so yeah, so without further ado, let's jump into Pro Stitcher. Um, I will link uh, Pro Stitcher, the Pro Stitcher designer and everything down, down below, or, not Pro Stitcher Designer, but uh, Pro Stitcher Patterns down below um, to her actual designs, and I'll put each one so you can kind of go to each set. You can get the birds individually if you want, but sets are always better. Um, you get a better deal. Anything else I need to say? Um, I don't know, probably just, I, I miss you. I missed you all. Um, we're almost at 12,000 people. I need to find something really good to give away. Uh, yeah, let's do it. I'll see you back here at the end of the video. All right, everyone, here we are. We are in Pro Stitcher Designer or Pro Stitcher Software or Pro Stitcher Studio or whatever thing they want to name it. Um, here's my home screen, and I just have this thing, this window open. I'm so excited because now Helen's designs are available for everybody to use. Um, so I have five designs. Um, I've been working on these for a while or working with these for a while. I am the club might have changed. They might be more than five now. I only have these five, but I have the Zebra Finch. Zebra, do you like what I did there? The Capabura, the Kingfisher, the Gallas, and the Bug Jingjar. <laughs> I am butchering those. You're welcome. Um, today I'm going to be working with the Kingfisher, but one of the things that Helen Godden does is she um, stitches these out. She's amazing. Oh my gosh, her artistic, she's a true artist. Her artistic skill and painting and everything is amazing. It's one of the reasons I've always really, really enjoyed her. Um, not to mention, she's a fabulous person. If you ever get a chance to talk with her, oh my gosh, uh, just being around her made me happy. I was able to spend some time with her at Houston last year. Um, but I also know my skill. And I'm never going to be able to do what Helen does. Like, um, let me pull up this picture. So this is a picture of one of Helen's quilts. I'm never going to be this. I can't, I can't paint and stay in the lines. I can stitch kind of in the lines, but not really, I guess. I don't know. But I know that that is something that I'm not going to be able to do. I'm, even their picture, that just makes me so happy. Um, so this here, not Adam So Fun. This is Adam Wishes. <clears throat> but what I can do is I can use my programs. I can use my Pro Stitcher and do other things. So I was sitting um, and thinking, how can I work with this? How can I use this to my advantage? And I came up with... What if I don't worry so much about staying inside the lines? So this is one of the design, designs I did. I color blocked them. So I took Helen's design, which is the black, and I just went in and added some stitching. So I'm going to show you how to do this. It was not hard. It actually went pretty quick. And I did it on a flight from, um, from Phoenix to Hawaii when I was going to Hawaii. So um, this is, we'll come back to that one. We're going to work with the Kingfisher, so I'm going to do the Kingfisher with you today. Here's the Capabura, 
And um, those are the three that I've done. So I still have the other two to do. But um, we're going to be working with this one. So this is this is the end product. But I'm going to come back to my blocks. And um, these, are, these are the designs just as I've downloaded them and imported them. So here's my Kingfisher block. The first thing I did was, what does a Kingfisher look like? I came to Google. I searched Kingfisher. And here are some images. And the, I just... Kingfisher up at the top, I clicked on images, and here are some images. So they're blue, or they're teals, um, their chests are this really beautiful gold yellow, and we can, basically, I just need to kind of see where those colors are, because we can work with this. I really like this one. Um, so I'm going to leave this open in my background, so I can kind of click back, and I'm just going to work my way down from the top. So the head is blue has a little bit of yellow on the outside that comes in um, contact with the beak. I'm not going to worry about this dark color. I, you know, I might. I might do the, the eye and then do the beak. Black, because I'm thinking about colors of thread because I am color blocking this. The, the, con, or the procedure is going to stitch this out, so I need to work with all of this with thread. So let's pull this back. So if I look at this, we even have some sections for us. So, you know, back here behind the eye was yellow. Oops, wrong picture. That's the wrong thing. Oh, I can hit that. So um, behind the eye is yellow, then you have some white. So they've already kind of sectioned our areas off for us. So the top is blue. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna use my tools. Um, let's see, I wanna go to my tools and we can do a line tool. I think I like to use the arc. But I'm going to try it with a line, I'm going to try it with an arc, and we're going to see which one works better. So I have my line tool, I have it selected. I know it's selected because if I look at my cursor, I have the little line. And I'm just going to rough outline this section. I might zoom into it, I'm going to hit Z and zoom in. And I'm going to even take off my grid. So um, i got to go back to my tools, my line tools there. Select line, there we are. And so now I'm just going to click around this. It doesn't have to be perfect. I can go outside the lines and right click to, um, to right click enter. We'll finish that line. And I'm going to come down here to my plus sign. I have no colors down here. This is going to be blue. It happens to be stitching blue. That's funny. But I'm just going to add a bunch of colors. I can change these later. Um, and so this one's going to be blue. So I am going to hit my select tool. My design is selected. I can right click this color. If I right click on red, it turns it red. So we're gonna keep this one blue. Um, one of the things I wanna do is I wanna close this shape. That's gonna add a little bit of a line right here. And now I'm gonna to go to my nodes or to my reshape or my shape tool. I'm gonna highlight all of my nodes. They all turn fat. And I'm gonna right click and hit smooth. I want it to smooth this out. Um, and now I can come in, like I have this wonky shape here. I can cut out, or I'm going to click that again. I can delete points. So I have those two selected. And I'm just going to come in and delete. I can move things around if I need to. But I don't want this to have so many points. I just want it to kind of smooth around. We can pop that one out. There we are. I probably could have made it without so many points, but I didn't. Oh, I took too many out. I right-clicked and then added one. And I'm just trying to see how I can make this look a little nicer. Um, let's see. I'm going to zoom out. I'm going to select my design, and I'm going to turn it black so I know what, what is what here. There we go. So there's my shape. I might, that's a, that's a little bit harsh, but this is, this is where you just kind of get picky. If I can come here and I'm going to do, maybe that's a symmetrical point. Let's see, what happens if I turn them all symmetrical? Ooh, Ooh I like that. I like it. Just smooth things out. It has a little bit of weird shape. I don't care. So here's my first thing. He has a hat. So now I'm going to select my hat. Go to my select tool. My hat is selected, and I'm going to come down here, change my sidebar up. Usually I have these really big, um, 
or have my screen as big as I can, but I can't do that here because you won't be able to see it. And let's see, I'm gonna do my effects button. And you have, you have your outlines, we have our running stitch, our motifs, our artwork, but we have all these fills. So you, you get to pick the way you wanna fill it. You can do straight lines, um, you can do artwork, you can do shapes. Um, this is kind of like a fingerprint. This is the one that I used. Uh, Crosshatch. Um, I haven't, or that's my motif. Um, or straight lines. I did the shapes, I think. Oh no, maybe I did the wave. We're gonna, ooh, you can do a stipple. Uh, we're gonna do the wave. Um, then up here you have your density. So here's something that I learned because I stitched out of practice. Um, I'm gonna change my density to five and hit apply. And you're gonna see it, it's gonna come nice and big. I found that five is too big. So I think I might come down, do it like a 3.5 and apply. The lines are going to look really close together here, but I think in the stitching, it's going to look better than the, the farther apart lines. But I would set one up, stitch it, and see what you like, because ultimately this is your, this is your design, right? So some things we want to look at. Do you see all these little lines in here? These are jumps. Sometimes they're going to be there, um, but we're going to try to get rid of them. Also, we can change the way that these lines stitch. So I'm going to go to my shape tool. And we have all of these other things. This is my stop point. This is my start point. So I can move them. So maybe I want the start over there and the stop over here. Um, so we can do that. Let me see, zoom in, did that do anything? Nope. Um, and I'm gonna change this. This line, this yellow line, is showing me the curve of those lines. So I'm gonna move this over here because I want this to move more right and left. So there we are. And now I'm gonna hit apply. And see how all those lines shifted and changed? To follow the shape that I created. So now I have a lot of I have a lot more jumps in here because I changed the way this looks. So I might want this one to stitch. Um, there's probably gonna be a jump, but let's put the ending here and the start here and hit apply. So we're still getting a jump there. We're still getting one up here. What if I move the end point up here and hit apply? So it's taking some of them out and leaving some of them in. Maybe I hit start and stop down here. What I'm trying to do is not have like all of these crazy ones. But this is, this is going to be like where you get to kind of get picky and decide if you want these, um, these in there or not. We can hit apply this way. Ooh, that might have fixed a little bit. Let's see. The weird part is this. What if I um, bring this point down? Oh, look. Oh my gosh, that got rid of a ton. So this is this is you as the quilter, as the as the quiltier. Um, this is you as the quilter. You get to pick how these ultimately go and how they stitch out. I could do this in two sections so that I wouldn't have the jump. I would only have the one jump in, instead of the two. Um, but, uh oh, I grabbed the wrong thing. Don't grab the wrong thing on accident. Um, but, oh, but you, you, I just, you get to pick, you get to, you get to be the master of that quilt. And I think a lot of you are scared, scared to do that. So this is going to have, um, let's see, it's going to start here. It's going to stitch, 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 stitch to there. Come down here. It's going to stitch. Is it only stitching one line? I see a jump over there, a jump over here. That's, a, oh, that might be a jump to the eye. Oh, look, this little tiny line. These things are the, were, the, were driving me nuts. What if I do that? But I'm gonna mess with it a little bit. Oh, look, I took it out, perfect. Um, so I mess with it a little bit. I'm going to, I'm going to look at these things. Does it have to be perfect? No. So here's piece one. It's done. 
and it is ready to go. I can see that I have a jump there and a jump there. I can't get all the jumps out. This big jump coming up is the jump from the stitch out of the um, bird itself. I can turn the bird off and we won't see that. So this design only has the two jumps and I'm okay with that because um, it's it has the two sections. So I, there's gonna be a jump somewhere. So now I'm going to go look at my design, my Kingfisher again because it's under the, uh, so we have gold behind the eye, white and white. I tried to do these all in se sections, so let's go do this other blue. I'm gonna hit the eyeball over here, that's gonna turn my design back on. And um, so all of this ultimately is blue. So I'm gonna do this one with the arc tool. Let me zoom in. So I kind of want to pick up all of this and I'm okay if it's getting some of the branches and stuff. I'm not stitching the branches. The birds are the important part. So I want to have my arc tool on and arc is one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three, two, three, two, three. Uh, that's not working. Did I, let me see, maybe I used the curve. Oh, oh, I missed the part. I'm going to hit backspace because I can e erase things with backspace. Pay attention. I need to go over here. I need to pick up this whole back. Come all the way down. Back up. Why did I start so far over? I don't know. So let's delete some points. Delete. Let's close my shape. There we are. That is one ugly shape, but now we can come to my reshape and we can take care of this. It's the, oh, let's actually, we're gonna reshape this. We're gonna do that same thing. We're gonna smooth this out. Is there a um, update path? No. So let's see, I'm gonna delete that one. I can delete some of these. I don't know why I, I just always make so many points. Um, oh, snap to grid is on. Take off my snap to grid and snap to anchor points so I can move things around a little bit easier. I don't like the lines to be so straight. I like it to have a little bit of detail. Like, that's crazy. Why did I do that? Remember, I can pull my nodes to turn my, uh, or pull my handles to turn the designs around a little bit. This needs to be a cusp. If you don't know what that means, go watch my Diving Into Designer. Your your nodes. Oh, that looks good. That's a pretty good outline. I have to say, I'm, I did pretty good that time. Um, I am going to hit my reshape tool, come down to effects. Oh, I'm sorry, I'm going to select tool, come down to my effects, hit my wave, and there we have it. The first thing I'm going to do is change my density. And so this is just under my, um, my fill. And there's different fills. You can, oh, is this where I... No, these are the uh, these are just the names of the fills down here. Um, so there's my wave. I'm going to change my density to 3.5. And remember, anytime you change things over here, I scroll down. You have to hit apply. So now it's not as dense. I can still see those jumps in there. So what I want to do is come to my reshape, and I want this to kind of flow down its back. So I'm going to change this to there this to there and I oh, I kind of like that let's see apply I like the little ripple you get right here across the back I think I'm gonna leave that in um, again we have those jumps so let's move the start point to this side and let's move the end point oh I might bring it down actually I'm trying to think of where things might start and end. 
Y. And I'm looking, there's a weird jump there. What if I do it there? Nope, that didn't fix anything. I'm gonna turn, I'm gonna go back to my sequence view and turn off my thing. Are these all jumps? I'm like following the thing. So there's a jump there. It's going to stitch a little bit. I'm okay with that. There's only the two. Here's the third. That's coming from the thing. I, I, I can deal with three jumps. I can deal with three jumps. It's making me look good, right? That's all that matters. So now I have the blue parts of my kingfisher done. Let me bring my sequence view back up. So those parts are done. So what I'm going to do is I am going to come over here. I'm going to hit the lock because that means I can't move them or mess them up in any way. And then I'm going to hide them. So now I want the eye and the beak. How did I do it before? Did I do them as one? Oh, I did do them as one. That's the nice thing. I have different options. Uh, Kingfisher. And I made them brown instead of black. So let's go to our curve tool. Bing, 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 bing. Right click and select it and hit close. This one's going to be, we're going to make this brown. Oh, you know what? I probably didn't want to. We're going to make a dark brown. Um, I didn't use black because black is the background stitching. Um, I might use it in the eyes and stuff when I stitch it out because I think that's what I did in the one that I stitched out and it was stitched out okay. Um, let's see, reshape. Not a lot of points. I like that. Let's make it smooth and just, nope, didn't like what it did there. Undo. Uh, let's, symmetrical. Oh, that did, look at what it did right there. Here. That's okay. We can fix it. Oops, zoom in, and let's just edit this point. Now, this is a symmetrical point. Do you see how one's getting bigger as the other one does? I'm going to make them both smaller. Hey, that worked. That looked good. Um, symmetrical, symmetrical points mean that if I make, I'm going to move one of these. If I move one, they both move. Do you see how they're doing the same exact thing? Um, so that's what's going to happen if you use the symmetrical. If I right click on this point and I change it to cusp, I can move one side without moving the other. Undo. And the smooth just goes, um, goes in and it smooths out that line some. And then the line turns it to a square and you should not be... See how this one doesn't come with nodes to move. I can move before, I can move after, but I have no handles on that um, on that line because it's a because of the type of point. So, um, all right, we're coming over to our fills. I'm going to select my design, add my lines, change my density to three. Maybe this one's going to be three, a little bit denser on the beak. I could live with that. Um, edit my beak, and this doesn't have to be as obnoxious. There we are. There's my start. There's my end. Apply. That weird jump. What if I just delete at this point? Would it look too weird because it doesn't come down? You tell me. It took that jump out. Look, there's a little tiny jump here. Where's it going? These, are, these ones are the sneaker jumps. You gotta be careful. What if I switch it? Nope, sneaker. Ooh, what if I put it here? All these jumps over here. We're going back to the beginning. And this is just something with Procedure Designer, how it digitizes things. So I have a little tiny jump there. I can live with that. It's not gonna be the end of the world. Um, actually, that line goes here. No, I need that. I need that last line. Um, I could pull these up closer. Oh, 
but that's just a minute. Let's see, smooth. If I pull these up closer to the neck. Oh yeah, baby. Oops. 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 There we are. There's still that little jump. It didn't do anything other than take me outside the lines. Undo, 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 undo. Undo, undo. Apply. Hey, that took it off. <laughs> I don't know what I did. But I'll take it. And we're stitching outside the lines. So now I have that, that piece done. So I'm coming over to my sequence view. That's the only, that's the only part that's going to be brown. I'm not coloring in the tree. I'm just doing the birds. I'm just color blocking the birds. Lock. And then I can turn the um, turn that piece off. So now I have to do the yellow piece here. It's yellow and white. Did I do white before? I should just move this over here. Oh, I just did. Well, that was a weird choice. I did two color blues. I must have been looking at a different picture. It's all about the picture. Um, let's see. I'm going to come over here and sequence. I want to turn things on. So I need to pick up this area and under the chin. So I think this was white. This was white. No, this is white. This is white. And this piece is yellow. So let's do those. I'm going to leave these on for a second so I can see. So let's see. I'm going to my curve tool. And if you look, my shape is overlapping. I'm okay with that. There's one. There's two. Select. I'm going to hold down control and I'm going to pick my other one. I can see over here both the blues. And these are white, so I'm going to turn them gray. I don't want to turn them white because if I turn them white, I'm not going to be able to see it. So there's my first one. Close. My second one. Pick. Pick. Nope, I'm going to have to come over here and hit close. I will turn some things off so I can see. And that weird piece is going to leave. And I'm going to smooth this out. And this one. I think that weird piece can stay, but we'll smooth this out. Let me turn that background back on. I like that. I like where they are. Perfect. So now, again, I'm going to select one of them. Select one of them. Why is it not selecting? Let me see. That won't, there we go. And change my density. So I filled it with my wave. I'm changing my density to 3.5. Apply. And I want it to shoot back towards the back of the head. So we'll shoot it back towards the back of the head. Apply. And there's a lot of jumps here. Let me zoom in close. I always do that. I hit zoom when you can't hit zoom. Um, so I want my end point up here my start point to be down here apply got rid of all of those jumps perfect I almost said baseline it's the world we live in baseline there we go so here's this one select it it's my wave and I'm again I'm in my effects tool I want this one to shoot towards the back as well so we're going to 3.5 Apply and change the direction. Apply and now change my end and my start. Apply. And this piece is going to give us a little bit of an issue, so I'm going to try to do that. And that took my jump away. So just stitching that little bit. And again, these are gonna, they're gonna overlap and it's gonna look okay. It's not gonna look okay, it's gonna look better than okay. It's gonna look great. So here we go, let's lock this color 
and oops, I made it disappear. So I locked it now. Um, I want to actually, I don't want those to disappear. I want to bring these back for a second because I need to work on this yellow piece that I'm putting in here. And I want to see, I want to, I want to see what I'm, what I'm stitching over. I'm okay that I'm stitching over it. Like I said, it's going to be okay, but I want to be able to see it. So here's my curves. And now I'm just going to wrap around to do my yellow part. Right click to enter, select it and close my shape. And we're going to make this gold. There we are. I can reshape this. It's pretty smooth. I did that one pretty well. Um, let's say smooth. Perfect. Come down to my sidebar. I'm going to hit my FX tool. Select my design. Do my wave. Change my density. 3.5. Apply. And then I will come over here and change. Because again, I feel like this is shooting towards the back. Maybe we want it to have a little more pizzazz. And now I'm going to my sidebar, turning on my sequence view. I'm going to turn everything else off because I want to see if I have jumps in here. No jumps. So that one just went in perfect, amazing, beautiful, gorgeous, stunning, and fantastic. Um, I can't lock this yet because I still have to do the chest. So I'm going to turn my blue back on one more time. And I'll turn my gray back on. I want to do this chest part right here. It's going to be the same yellow, so I'm going to continue to work in this color. Here's my curve. I'm coming down. Part of the bird is going to look green because we know blue and yellow make green. I don't work. I was not worrying about their feet. Right click when I'm done. Select, close, right click on yellow, and reshape. Let's smooth this baby out. Didn't really need that. I don't think I need, there's this weird point. These two points right together. I don't think I need both of them. Delete. Move it over. Delete. Put that one there. And I just kind of mess around with this. Do I need to do this? No. Does it make me happy? Somewhat. I don't, well, I'm going to keep all those. Let's see. We're going to smooth this one more time. There we go. So now I'm going to select it. Come to my select. I'm selected. Over to my effects tool. Hit my wave. Oh, it's dense and lovely. 3.5 density. Apply. And now this is, this is one pretty large piece. Um, let's see. And those big pieces are when you can really see some of this texture come in. So I'm going to come to my shape tool. And I'm going to go for the gold here. Let's go for the gusto. I'm not that, not that gusto-y. Not that gusto-y. And actually, I want it to like start and end there. Come through. I'm getting less gusto-y as we go. Huh. So there's my thing. Apply. And how does that look? I don't like it. I went too gusto-y. What if we just do that? I actually like that a lot better. Um, but let's look at this a little bit so we can see our starts and ends. We see um, there's a little bit of a weird curve here where it comes in and out. So we might have some starts and ends. So let's go to our reshape, select it. What if we put our start right here and our end over here? Apply. I need to turn everything else off so I can see this. Um, so I'm going to try something because see how this kind of wants to connect there? I'm going to bring that line out a little bit and see if that fixes some of this. And over here, I might bring that line out a little bit too. Oh, that fixed a little bit. Let's see. Um, apply. So there's that one. There's only one. I can live with one jump. I'm going to leave that one in there. 
So now I have these, we can lock them. And now I have my Kingfisher done. Oh, I turned everything off. I wanted to turn everything on and I turned it all off. I'm hitting the little eyeball. The eyeball is like your view tab. It brings things in and out. So there's my Kingfisher. It's color blocked. Um, I'm gonna have three different stitch outs and we'll do another video and I'll show you how to stitch this out. Um, but what I did when I stitched this, I stitched all of the details, the colors, because I wanted to go like blue, yellow, brown, um, white. And then I came in and stitched the rest of it. But we also have all these leaves. So one of the things I thought would be nice if those leaves were also green. So um, I did the same thing. So let's come over here, view, and I'm going to do my curve. Right click, pick it, hit my close shape, redo this, and we're going to smooth this out. But then also I'm going to take off this point, this weird point right there, delete. I'm going to change this into a line point because I want points. I want this to be pointed. A line point. I can pretty much just take and do two points around this leaf. Mess with my nodes. There we go. And so now I'm going to take my leaf, change it green. I like to change what the colors I'm going to work with. Come to my effects tool, do my wave. And maybe it's a leaf. Maybe I'm not even going to do a wave. I'm going to do a line. We're going to change my density to 3.5. These leaves are kind of small. Maybe we're going to do the density 3. We want them a little more dense. I'm going to re uh, uh, do my shape tool. And this time you get this line straight across. This wants to go horizontal. There is a jump here. If I move the start and the end, I wonder if that's going to fix it. Apply. Perfect. Um, so now I have these horizontal lines across my leaf. There we are. A baseline. <laughs> I'm so weird. Um, so there's my first leaf. If I come over here to my, to my tab, I see that. This leaf has 231 stitches. Now I have one. I'm just going to select it. And I'm going to copy and paste, drag my next one over, and I can use these to rotate them around. And then copy and paste. I'm hitting, um, on my keyboard, I'm hitting Control C, Control V, and I just went around and placed them. Control V, because I already have that leaf on my clipboard, so I can just hit Control V instead now. Now, if I had some that were kind of all like the same shape, like the, these, these two and these two look similar, I might like hit this one, control copy, control V, because then I don't have to rotate it. And if they're not perfectly on, I'm okay with that. Oh my gosh, I think it looks amazing. Now, where the machine is going to jump to, we're going to fix that in a second. Control V. This one's a little... Uh, let's see, I'm going to zoom into here. This one's a little big, so let's go to a resize, and we can resize it down a little bit. But again, what do I always say? You're the quilter. You get to pick what you want to do. Control V, Control V. I'm just going to drop these over here and then rotate them at the same time. And like if if you're a perfectionist, you're like, oh no, I need it in the lines. Don't do this, paint it. <laughs> that wasn't nice. Um, but I, I'm definitely outside the lines. I'm okay with that. There's, I can just kind of change these a little bit and get all those um, going. Now, you see all the jumps? Um, I'm crazy and I would want this to, st gosh, that looks good. This is gonna be better than the first one I did. Um, I want these to stitch in a certain order. So if I, on the right, so I have my sidebar. Um, I'm in my sequence view. I can select it and see that it's going to stitch that one, and then this one, and then that one, and this one, and that one, and this one. And then it's jumping before it does that. I don't want that. So I want to, I want this one, I want number 15 to stitch before 14. So I can right click, and um, where's my move up? 
I just usually drag and drop it. There's a way, uh, there's move to back, move to front. I don't want either of those. So I'm just gonna click on it and I'm gonna drag it up. And if I, if I hold it over 13, it drops one under. So now 13 is this, this piece. There we are. 14 is now this piece. 15 will be this one, and 16, 17, 18, 19. Oh, 20 and 21 got to get moved. So I want it to go, um, let's see, 12, 13, 14. I really want it to do 15, 16, 17, and then go 18, 19, 20, 21. So that is 15. I want this to be 15. I want this one to be 16, 17. So I have 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21. And I want, so I want 20, and this is just me. So this is how I'm doing this. I'm changing this order. I'm picking my piece. So I'm here's my 20, but I really want it 17. Is that right? I want an 18, sorry. So I want 20 to be 18. I'm gonna left click, slide it up. If I want it to be 18, I'm gonna hover over 17. It's gonna drop it right after. So now that's 18. And this one I want 19, so I'm left clicking, bringing it up, hovering over 18, it drops it after. So now it's 19, 20, and 21. So now it's gonna stitch um, where I'm going to count just uh, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21. And that's because I just reordered it. So there we are. 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21. And now we have this design ready to stitch. All right, so now that we have everything done... We can come and check out our, watch our stitch out. So I'm going to go to stitch out. And I always come over here and turn my speed up. I'm going to select and I'm going to hit space bar so I can see it all. And we're going to hit run. And we can watch how this is going to stitch through. Um, this says there's 9,900 stitches, almost, uh, almost 10,000 stitches in this. Um, that is not correct because we, we stitch out. We tell it how many we want, stitches per inch and all that jazz. So um, this is the base design of the Kingfisher. Now it's doing my fills. So you can see there was a jump. And it's gonna do my background blue part. It just, I think this is gonna look amazing. The hardest part is going to pick colors. For those of you who embroider, that embroidery thread's gonna look so beautiful, fantastic here. Doing my nose, doing my uh, white parts. Here's my yellow. And then the chest cavity. And you'll see that you have places where it overlaps. You know, it's overlapping here. That's okay. I can watch this for hours. Oh my gosh. And since everything's up here is color coded, I can um, reorganize and realign things or reorder them and know what's stitching when because of the colors that's going on. So um, in our next video, we will actually stitch this out. So we'll see you back here in just a minute. Before we jump over, um, here are the other ones that I've done. Like I said, I said um, I've did, done these. I've done a Kingfisher, but I like the new one a little bit better. And God, those, I mean, really, no, uh, look at the difference. No comparison. Oh my gosh, the new one is so much better. Um, and my cup of her up. I'm gonna have to redo all of these now because I know that uh, trick about um, changing the size. All right, we'll see you right back here. Okay, everybody, so we just color blocked the Kingfisher bird. Um, I really love how it turned out. Like I said in the video, I think the new one looks so much better than the last one. I think part of it is that density, changing that density from five to 3.5 and having those lines just show up closer together is gonna make that whole design just look better. So um, I don't know, we'll find out when we stitch it. Like I always say, um, stitch it, do a test run. We're gonna, I'll be your test run. You can decide if you like it in the video too. So um, remember, 
if you go stitch this out, there are it's gonna it's gonna add some lines. It does some funky things, so we have to go in and do one more step, which we'll do next week. So I hope to see you back. And um, next week's video will be out on Friday instead of when what what's today? Oh Thursday. I can make it out on Thursday. Yeah, we'll put it out next Thursday. Um, anything else? Any say? I just missed you all. Thank you to my loyal fans who have still been around and still watching. Thank you to the new fans who are just getting here. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and hit that bell icon so you're notified when new videos drop since I'm starting them again. Um, if there's certain things you want to see, message me. Let me know. Um, I know we're, I'm going to do some uh, a few other uh, whole cloth quilts. I really am like digging the whole cloth quilt thing because it's so fast. You just stick the design in there, tell Pro Stitcher to go. Um, we're still in chats with uh, the Summer Quilt Along over at my Adam So Fun Facebook page. Remember, Adam So Fun with an SEW on Facebook, Instagram. No, I'm not on Twitter, uh, YouTube, whatever. On the socials. I'm on TikTok. You can TikTok me. Um, but yeah, thank you all for watching. Until next time. At the end of the day, it's just quilting. We want to laugh. We want to have a good time. And we want to stitch out those birds. Go check out Helen's new designs. All the links are below. And don't forget, ASF10 will save you an additional 10% off on all digital designs at ProStitcher.com. See you in the next one. Bye.